This is the next in a series talking about how to read the Bible. One of the things that's important to understand is that reading the Bible prayerfully is an ancient Catholic tradition and it is part of the process of becoming an informed Catholic. It has always been uh, assumed, at least during the past, we'll say, 100 years, that the role of the Catholic was not to read the Bible, that we had Catholic teaching. No, that's not true. We have an important role in reading the Bible. In fact, St. Jerome says, ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. And so it's important for us to know the Bible and know it well, whether we are ordained or a layperson. Now, the process, uh, I've talked about already the tools in the last video. So what I'm going to talk about now is the process itself. So you have the tools, the four color pen, and you have the Bible. Now what you're going to do is you're going to, and I'll give you a passage to read at the end of this, you're going to find a passage and you're going to underline different, um, different verses in the Bible. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to begin with underline, as you're just going to read the passage, and using your four color pen, if you see a principle, for example, God is love, that's a principle, it's a simple statement that tells us who God is or tells us a truth, God is love. So if you see a principle, underline it in one color, I use black. Now, if you see a command, not a commandment, although that's part of this too. Remember what a command is. You learned this probably in the second grade in elementary school. It is a, it is a sentence that has you understood, so the, 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 the subject is understood, so you actually don't see the subject, and then it has the command form of the verb and the predicate. That's a command. So anytime you see that form, you... Um, you just underline that in the color red. And obviously there's, there's examples of that as well. Love one another, that's a command form. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always, that's a command form. And there's also the uh, third person plural command form, which is let's and let us. Anything that says this is what we need to do, that is the third person plural command form, underline that in red or whatever color you want to use. I use red. Then we have the third thing, which is promises. I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will never die. That's a promise. Anything that says this will happen or, you know, I, uh, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Anything that says, that's from John, this will happen. Because you are faithful, you will experience eternal life. Whatever the case may be, this will happen. Underline that in another color, and I use green. So what you're going to do is you're going to look through this uh, part of the Bible, and you're going to underline these various verses in either a principle, a command, or a promise. And what you're going to find is by doing this, this verse comes out. It really deepens your ability to see what's in that verse. And one of the reasons for this is when you just see the verse as a bunch of words or see a passage as a bunch of words on, on paper, yes, there are important things there, but every single word has a lot to say. So if we divide these into the principles, commands, and promises, now you see it at a deeper level. This was taught to me, by the way, by the Kansau Nova community, and it was Father or Monsignor Jonas Abib, who was the founder of Kansau Nova, who teaches this. He learned that uh, Saint Pope John Paul II also used this particular process, among many others. So it's this is what you do now. As far as reading the Bible, this is what I'm going to encourage you to do. For right now, stay away from the Old Testament. It's not that I have any problems with the Old Testament, but the Old Testament, um, first of all, it's a more profound language, um, and it also says a lot of things that need to be understood within a larger context. So let's go with the basics, and a lot of the basics you find in the New Testament. Now, Monsignor Jonas Abib recommends that the first seven days of Bible study, you read the same um, letter over. And so your first seven days, you're not going to do this with any other letter, but you'll do it for this one, is the first letter of John. Read the entire letter using this process of the pen. 
Now, the reason why you want to do this is this was one of the original catechisms of the church. The first letter of John was used as a catechism. It is so important a letter that it is used as the first reading almost entirely through the uh, Christmas season. So it's a powerful letter. It has a lot to say to us. It has some very basic things and some very profound things to say. And so that's why for the first seven days, go through the um, first, uh, go through the entire first letter of John. Aside from that, we'll talk in the next uh, in the next video of what's the next step to do, where to go from there. So we're just going to focus on the first letter of John. If and as far as for right now, we're just going to focus on the New Testament. We're not going to go into the Book of Revelation right now. We'll eventually get to the Old Testament, the Book of Revelation. But right now, you want to focus on the New Testament and specifically the first letter of John. God bless you.